Yeah, you found it. That's where mama hid the jingle ball. Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the mini witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This week's video is five more mistakes you're making and how to fix them, including using spoiled paints, understanding the pigmentations of colors and how to make your paint last longer on your wet palette. Number one is trying to use spoiled paint. The point of a wet palette is to keep your paint wet and working for longer. But if you're on day two and your paint just isn't working, it's time to scrub it. Now, this might seem counterintuitive because the whole point of a wet palette is to keep your paint wet and working for longer. But how much longer is longer. This is going to depend on the environment of which you're painting, your paint, your paint palette, and a bunch of other factors, which all add up to making your paint last from a few hours to a few days. Really, the goal of a wet palette is to keep your paint working longer than it would on a dry palette, where the paint begins to dry almost as soon as you apply it to your paint palette. So while it might be really frustrating that you can't get your paint to last longer than a day, really consider yourself lucky because at least you got to use it through a paint session. The real goal of a wet palette is to keep your paint wet and working for that paint sitting. And I would expect that anything beyond that is just a bonus. My main point is that if your paint isn't working, throw it out. If the paint has begun to separate, you can go ahead and mix it and try to reincorporate it, but depending on how long it has been separated, you may not be successful. If your paint has begun to dry, you can try to reactivate it with water or glaze medium. Now I live in a Victorian house in the Midwest. My environment is constantly changing, which is why I consider myself lucky if I can get my paint to last past my initial sitting. If you store your wet palette in a more humid environment, consider cracking the lid a little bit and not sealing it the entire way. This airflow will help keep condensation from building up on the inside of your wet palette and causing your paints to separate. If you live or work in a drier climate, then you're going to want to seal your wet palette tightly. I use the Everlasting Wet Palette from Wetgrass Games, and I really do like it. It's not a problem with the wet palette, it's all a problem with the unpredictability of my office. Number two is spreading your paint too thin on your palette. As you mix paint and load paint up onto your brush, you are most likely spreading your paint thinner and thinner across your palette. Now that's natural and totally makes sense, but the thinner you spread your paint, the faster it's going to dry. Keeping your paint in a big glob is going to keep it wet and working for longer. Now you might say, Lila, doesn't a big glob of paint mean that I'm going to be wasting more paint? And you might be, it really depends on what you want to do with your paint, what your plan is, and what you rank as more important. Saving paint and then pulling it thinner across your palette or keeping that mixture that you've made wet and working for several days, thereupon needing to create globs of paint. Of course, one sheet would be to mix your color and then paint all of the areas that color so you don't even need to worry about remixing your paint later. Number three is using paint straight from the bottle without shaking it. You place your paint on your palette and then use it on your miniature and it's thin and milky and the opacity is just complete garbage. However, it's not the paint exactly but instead it's the fact that you haven't agitated your paint. Paint can begin to separate over time and the pigments that are heavier begin to settle to the bottom of your bottle. To fix this, shake your bottle vigorously. And I mean 
vigorously. Four, thinking all colors are created equal. Not all paint colors are created the same. And I don't mean paint brand, I mean literal colors. All colored pigments come in different sizes. White has the largest color pigment, while red has far smaller pigments. These pigment sizes help to determine the opacity of your paint. Therefore, white tends to have better coverage, while red tends to be less opaque. This is why I recommend adding white to whatever color you're having problems getting the proper opacity. This can be solved in two ways. First, you can use a better base color. For example, if I wanted to do a red cape, instead of attempting to paint red straight over my gray primer, I might base it in brown. Vibrant colors are notorious for having terrible coverage. What you can do for these types of colors is apply a base color of white and then apply your vibrant neon over top. Lastly, is only looking at other miniature painting artists for inspiration. So this totally makes sense. Of course, you're going to look at people who are doing the same type of art as you are, but if you're not looking at other artists, you are totally missing out. Like I talked about in my Painting Like the Masters series, there are so many inspiring artists throughout art history as well as working today. One of my favorite artists to draw inspiration from is Peter Mobracker, Mo, Mobracker, Mor, Morbacher, Mo, Morbacher, Peter Morbacher. He does fantasy art and has the most beautiful, amazing grasp of colors and color schemes. I'm constantly looking at his work, not only for color palettes, but to see how he uses colors to create interesting depths in highlights and shadows. Whenever I'm feeling really stumped on a model, I always go look at Morbacher's work to find inspiration. I hope that this video was interesting and helpful to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and visit my YouTube channel. If you like what I do here, you can support me in a couple ways. First, you could join me on Patreon, which is the best way to support me, where you can join my growing family of painters on Discord, get access to YouTube videos early, as well as participate in live streams. Otherwise, you can also support me by following me on Instagram or buying literally anything you want by following the Amazon affiliate links down in my description. It doesn't cost you anything extra, it's just a little bit for me. I hope that this video finds you well. If you took any inspiration from this, feel free to tag me on Instagram and tell me why this video was helpful to you. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll see you on the next one.